In this video, I'm going to talk about different ways that you can edit. In a previous video, I talked about using keyboard focus key commands and navigation to edit. If I'm at the beginning of a clip and I have tab to transients active here, you can also turn this on and off by hitting option command tab on a Mac. Then I can hit the tab key and go to the first transient in my drum track. So you can combine the navigation keys and the keyboard focus editorial keys to quickly go through and just edit your session ahead of time, which is normally how I would do it. So P and colon go up and down. L goes to the left to the previous transient. Quote goes to the next transient. And then you have your trimming keys, which are A, which trims off the beginning, S that trims off the end. There is also fade keys, D, which fades the beginning, and G that fades the end. And you can combine these for a really quick editorial cleanup at the beginning of your session. So for instance, right now my cursor is at the beginning of my track. I hit the quote key or I hit the tab key. Now my cursor is right here, the beginning transient of my drums. I could trim it with A, colon, down, trim, 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 trim. I could do this really fast. One way to make this easier is I can create an edit mix group in my bottom left, which I also showed in another video. I can highlight all of my drum tracks together, hit command G, create a group. Then I would just be able to tab to transient once on my drum tracks. I could trim them all together as a group. You could have up to 104 groups. It seems like a weird number. If we go down to the bottom left, you could see that these relate to letters. So there's 26 letters in the English alphabet. You can see that there is four banks of 26 available for this weird number of 104. If you have a mouse-based workflow and you want to work that way, one choice is utilizing my trim tool. This allows you to edit the beginning of a clip and make it shorter. It also highlights the entire clip. If I click and hold this, or I keep hitting F6, I can see that there's several other types. One of them is the time compression expansion. This is dangerous because it doesn't just trim off the end, it actually makes the contents longer or shorter. You also have the scrub trim tool. If you're having trouble finding the edge of something, it will actually play it and allow you to hear where that edge is. This will allow you to trim using the mouse. I might want to give it a little bit of extra space in the beginning and then create a fade as well. So I have several options with this. I can again use my keyboard focus key commands, maybe tab to transient to that, and then I can hit D. It would put a fade on the beginning. Another choice that I have is I can highlight the entire area. I can hit F and Pro Tools treats it like a crossfade with the keyboard focus key commands. The same thing works at the end of a clip. I can figure out where I want my fade to start, and then I can hit G to fade from the cursor to the end. Or if I have that whole area highlighted, I can hit F, and then it would put my default fade type here. Another choice to activate fades, if you wanna have a little bit more control over which fade type you want, you don't just want your default, you can highlight this area, you can hit Command F, and it will bring up this window. This allows you to choose whether it's equal gain or equal power. It also allows you to have access to different types of curves immediately. Another way you could do this is with your grabber tool. You could double click a fade that's already been created. It has audition features as well. If we were making a crossfade between two clips, I could hit F and make a clip with the default fade type, or I can hit Command F and it would bring up this window. Usually the incoming fade and the outgoing fade are linked in some way or another. And we could see that from the middle, this particular one is linked in what's called equal gain. By default, this is gonna be a linear fade. This is not going to raise or lower the signal at all. So this is good if you have an incoming fade and an outgoing fade that are in phase with one another. But if you have things that are coming from two different sources, they might be slightly out of phase, it might be a good idea to experiment with equal power. So equal power here looks like mountains. Equal power actually will bump the signal up a little bit. If you're worried about phase cancellation, this is the type of crossfade to use. 
if you make changes in this, let's say I change one fade type, then the other one is going to change with it. So if I go linear on this one to make up for it, to have an equal power at the crossfade point, it is going to move the crossfade point over and it's gonna change this fade type. You can also have these fades not be linked at all. Maybe this one is over here like this and you can see that there's no connection between the two. If you ever see this on a test, it means the linked in and out function of your fade window is set to none.